Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a pair of HD3870 graphics cards from AMD. I purchased them for £20, roughly $25, and although I thought I'd be getting the 3870X2, the version of the card with two GPUs on one board, I got the 3870s instead. No big deal because these two together should have the same performance. This is the $25 Crossfire Experience. Now back in 2007 these cards launched at $269 US dollars and for your money you got 512 megabytes of GDDR4, a 775 megahertz clock speed, 320 shady units and on top of that a pretty decent gaming experience. Both cards require a 6 pin power connector and for this Crossfire setup a 550 watt PSU is required. These days buying any number of these wouldn't be worth it because the card support ends at DirectX 10 but if your budget is small and you've got the urge to play some older games will this super cheap Crossfire setup suffice? Well let's take a look. Now Crossfire, just like SLI, can sometimes prove awkward and even today it can cause stuttering in some games with some games refusing to work altogether. But let's get into the tests and see what these old beasts can do. For a comparison, we've included the results from a single HD3870 as well. So all of these tests were actually ran in full HD 1080p, which was the first surprising uh, bit of information there. First up we tried Crisis 2 with the lowest preset that the game will go and we saw an average of about 40 frames per second. Now going into this video and this test I had no idea what to expect from this 10 year old setup but having played the game for about half an hour I have to say that I was very impressed and could happily play Crisis 2 all day on this system. Just for your information here we are using the i5-4460 as per usual and 8GB of DDR3 RAM. Normally I would run MSI Afterburner to uh, show you the GPU and CPU usage but unfortunately that just didn't want to work today so we've stuck with fraps. Next up it's Dirt 3 at 1080p once again with the medium settings. I thought I'd set it to medium because I wasn't really sure once again what to expect but I was surprised when the frame rate averaged out at around 80 FPS. A very impressive result once again and turning things up to ultra or even higher would see the frame rate drop below 60 which for a racing game like this could prove a bit off-putting at times, but it was nothing that wasn't playable. I'm just being a little bit fussy for no reason. And as a budget gamer, anything sort of around 30 is fine for me. Finally, we've added another new game to our collection. This is Battlefield 3, and here on this Crossfire setup, we averaged 45 frames per second. Again, the game did drop on occasion, but it was nothing too noticeable, and as you can see here, it made for a pretty good experience, even on the low settings. I'm surprised at how good the game still looks not only on this system but how it's held up over the years as well. Next up it's uh well this is where the news gets a little bit bad. Those of you who don't really like buying used GPUs or don't like the idea of it are going to love this bit. The uh, power color card actually decided to die when I tried to test Crisis. The uh, screen was flickering a little bit in the Crisis 2 test, I'm not sure if you noticed, but when it came to trying to run Crisis, we did so at 1080p at the high settings for about 10 minutes before the screen just went blank. So I've officially had a graphics card killed by Crisis, something that I don't ever think has happened before and I sure hope never happens again. As you saw from the single 3870 results, the games didn't hold up too bad either. But as I said at the start of this video, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying one of these if you plan on playing the latest games because obviously it won't support it. However, I have enjoyed taking a look back at this Crossfire setup and found that the cards are still capable when it comes to playing those older titles at full HD resolution. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. If you did, leave a like down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as always, I hope to see you all in the next one.